Welcome back for another edition of Six Pack Pressures, where I break down my six favorite blitzes from the previous weekend, as well as honorable mentions. I'm your host, Chris Fasser, a.k.a. Coach Fass, and let's jump right into the week three action. Let's get into it, man. One and nine. By the way, we had to dig very deep in the archives to find an interception that Matt <laughs> threw in his career. Howell chased in trouble, and down he goes! Another sack for the Buffalo defense, and Bernard has been everywhere in the first quarter. The Bills run a pressure I learned to spike. It's an inside linebacker pressure designed to attack the man side of the protection, which is usually to the side of the running back and half slide. For my coaching buddies, this was the impetus for Dave Aranda's infamous spike one rat. However, this one is just a five-man pressure, no sim. The three technique here to the back is going to pinch inside which is gonna take the guard with him. This inside linebacker here is gonna blitz straight head inside. What should happen here is the running back will have to step up. This linebacker, when he's blitzing, needs to finish inside. So if the quarterback tries to step up in the pocket, he's not allowed to and has to go outside. This linebacker over here has the running back. Let me clear out some of these drawings here. And he's gonna fast add. As soon as the back steps up the block, he's gonna end up adding around to create a basically a six-man pressure. Some people call this green dog. The coverage is cover one on the back end with no rat, and here's the result. This blitz would have been higher up on the list. However, the Bills defensive end, AKA the U's own flying Frenchman, Gregory Rousseau here loses contain. However, Terrell Bernard is so fast and violent that he's able to track down the quarterback and make the play. Two minute warning. Insert Shaq meme here. Gus Bradley, I have to apologize. I was not familiar with your game. Through the first couple weeks, Bradley has brought some funk. Here the Colts start out with two down linemen and they're gonna amoeba or walk around before settling into a loaded front with three down linemen to the running back. They're gonna run a three man twist here. Here the Ravens try to pick it up with a four man slide and the running back free releasing. And he ends up blocking QB draw at the end. I don't really know what's going on there. However, Buckner's inside move freezes the guard. He has to step down and this allows Franklin to wrap right around. That is a really hard stunt to pass off. With three guys in a slide like this, you would see that the, the guard would have to pass set for Buckner coming inside, have to get a call from the other side, and after escorting him down inside, have to spin back out, not really spin, but move back out for Zaire Franklin and pick him up. That is really, really hard, and it's a reason why this stunt, which I call Truck, is one of my favorites. Even though they lost, the Ravens killed it this week with creative pressures. The Ravens have been the home of one of the most creative defenses in the league for a long, long time. And Mike McDonald has continued the trend. Here's a four-man strong overload pressure from the field with an old Rex Ryan twist. The three technique and five technique from the boundary are going to drop. We'll get to what they do in a second. The nose is going to step and then contain all the way to the boundary. You're going to have an inside pressure here by Queen. A twist here, which ends up pinning the running back inside. Roquan Smith coming underneath. And then you're gonna have Kyle Hamilton coming off the edge. The Colts try to four man slide this and bring the back to that side, which is about all you can do when you're trying to block something like this. However, the penetration from the four technique here pins the back, he can't get out to the edge for Kyle Hamilton. We have the twist. And then Kyle, who's off screen, is gonna come off the edge. The coverage is unique going back to the Wink Martindale days, and I think even much further back than that, maybe even going to Rex. It's called Bandit. The Ravens are gonna play cover zero with the DBs. This DB is gonna come over and then take number three. These two guys are gonna be low hole rat droppers. And the man defenders are gonna play with zone vision for a few counts. As you can see, the corner up top is gonna let the shallow go. and he's gonna end up helping replace on three coming back across. The rat guys are supposed to pick up the crosser and much like some of the other pressures we're gonna talk about, there are quote unquote open guys, but the quarterback doesn't have enough time to find the open receiver and he's sacked. This is a great pressure by the Ravens. Really, really love this stuff and you're gonna see more. 
Here are the Saints running the same pattern with different players out of a more traditional look. The DN to the open side is going to rush, and the backer right here has the running back is going to drop as a rat. The nose is going to work away from the back. The DN here is going to penetrate with Cam Jordan looping around. And then you're going to see the nickel come off the edge outside here. The O-line is going to 5-0 this, meaning the 5-0 linemen have the 5 down and the running back is going to be coast to coast. The O-line does a good job passing off the twist inside. But A.J. Dillon doesn't get back out to the nickel. He comes free off the edge. Love tries to get rid of it, but he can't, and it's ruled a sack and a 21-yard loss. Now, if I'm Derek Carr, I am looking at the matchup at the bottom. Carr wrapped up. Down he goes. I will be the first one to admit this blitz is probably a little too high on the list, but I'm a sucker for cross-dog fire zones in 2023. It's not something you see as much anymore. The Packers do this out of wide three techniques, which makes it easier to contain from the weak side. The edge to the right is going to drop. This three technique here is gonna get up field. The edge from the left side getting up field and containing. This three technique here almost messes up the blitz by coming inside, which he's not supposed to do. He's supposed to clear it out. The Packers are gonna send Eric Wilson first and Quay Walker second. The Saints call cross jet protection here. So you're gonna get a three, two slide. The three linemen go into the defensive right. This means running back Kendra Miller is gonna to have to come across and block Wilson. The goal of a lot of these pressures are to get mismatches in one-on-one -on -one scenarios. And this looks like a pretty good one. Wilson is able to make Carr pull the ball down and Quay Walker and Rashawn Gary get the sack. Sadly, I think this is the play that Carr got hurt on. You never want to see that. The coverage here looks great. The Packers are going to play zone drop, fire zone three, which to me really should only be done against condensed set. You can see here the corner is going to make a tube alert call, which tells the fire hook player who's dropping that he is going to take the shallow, which means the corner will replace him on three up when this receiver comes across. The coverage holds up really well, and the defense makes a sack and forces a punt. Again, Kev, everybody at the line of scrimmage, forcing communication by Justin Herbert in the noise. On third and nine, here comes that pressure. Herbert steps away, ball knocked out of his hands, and it's covered up. The Vikings are in their hawk look, which puts a defensive player in every gap with an extra player off the edge here, rushing off the edge to the side of the running back. The Chargers are expecting the hawk blitz from the Vikings, which I covered a couple weeks ago with Ted Wynn. I'll link up here in the top right. I think it's the top right. And also on a live stream with the 2021 Dolphins against the Ravens. So I'll also link up there. What the Vikings do here is they actually predetermine their rush. Flores called this Tito, the Dolphins. So the B gap players are going to drop. The A gap players are going to rush, as well as the C gap players. The end to the side that the DB is lined up on the back is going to kind of grab the tackle so he can't get out there. And then Harrison Smith is going to come off the edge. Expecting the Hawk Blitz, the Chargers try and full slide it with the line blocking to the defense's right. And running back Joshua Kelly coming across to block Hunter. This is not a winning business model to put your running back on a stud like Hunter. And although Kelly wins initially by forcing Hunter to go around the edge, Hunter runs the hump and he's able to push the ball out of Herbert's hand and he falls on it for a big third down stop. One issue the Vikings have here, if Kelly had come across, and gone out fast to the flat. The guy covering him here is Harrison Smith, who's coming off the edge. He's not gonna be able to get there. So that is one potential answer to this blitz. However, as you can see here, it's very, very effective. Like the Ravens pressure at number four, the DBs are playing man to man here on the outside. And you have the DB walked up here playing the tight end man to man. Now the Vikings DBs are a little more vision conscious. They play a zone technique for the first two steps and then get into man. You have to have some real balls to call that and teach that, but they have the two hook defenders dropping and here's how it plays out. 
What I don't understand about this play from the Chargers is Brian Flores has been doing this for years. He calls these max pressures all the time. And as you can see here with the routes, there is no hot, there is nothing quick over the middle. You're gonna have verts here and here with a dig coming from the outside, well past the sticks, and there's no quick outlet for Herbert. And he ends up taking the sack here. If it's there to get the first- Blitz for this week got not one, but two sacks and a forced fumble. Between this and the last Ravens blitz, Kyle Hamilton had three sacks in week three. This pressure dialed up by Mike McDonald really stresses out the offense. The bear presentation right here forces the offense into a 5-0 protection, meaning these guys are gonna take the lineman in front of them, or backer in this case here with Roquan Smith. With Patrick Crean walked up on the edge, and the 5-0 calls the running back is coast to coast. He has an obvious threat to him, and the Colts try to counter the pressure by free releasing the back and Queen will peel with it. The problem is there's no one left to pick up Kyle Hamilton coming scot-free off the edge. The two droppers in this call are the zero technique nose and the three technique over here. You see the joys of simulated pressures. With Smith and Clowney coming here and pinning these tackles, they can't get to Hamilton. And now you have a center and a left guard blocking air and no one on the edge. The last clip was the 41st snap of the game for the defense. Here's the fourth snap. We have the same exact pressure with the same exact blocking scheme. The back even flares. No one can get to Hamilton and we get another sack. Here's a two minute pressure from the Colts out of a 3-3 look. Really creative pressure here. The nose is gonna slant to the right A gap. DeForest Buckner is gonna loop around. EJ Speed is gonna loop around the edge and play contained. Quiddy Pay is gonna run the hump off the edge. He eventually ends up getting the sack. Spoiler alert. Stewart here runs in the B gap outside in, and Zaire Franklin has the running back. What ends up happening is the back steps up into protection. So Franklin's gonna add, we get double fan. The center stays on the zero technique, and we end up getting three guys here with two blockers. I know the center tries to get back. It's too late. Lamar is flushed. Pay gets a sack. Points for Jackson there, trying to get rid of the ball. Let's watch this one more time. This next pressure makes the list not because it's super creative, but because Lions defensive coordinator Aaron Glenn decides to blitz on an end of the half Hail Mary, which is something you don't see every day. The Falcons end up picking it up, but rookie inside linebacker Jack Campbell does a really good job staying active, getting off the block. And Desmond Ritter scrambles right into his arms. Here's a cover three sim from the Steelers. The mugged up A-gap backers are gonna drop. The three technique from the field is gonna contain, can't see the number there. The field outside backer is gonna drop in the hook. TJ Watt is gonna contain off the edge here. 57, I think busts here, knowing this pressure and running it myself, and knowing how NFL D-line coaches feel about leaving inside rush lanes only covered by one player being a safety. I think he's supposed to do this and Fitzpatrick is supposed to come to the B gap. However, 57 works outside. Fitzpatrick does a great job adjusting and he's unblocked to the quarterback. I think it's a pretty lame penalty here. Jimmy G ends up getting knocked out, which you hate to see. Here's the wide copy of the pass drops. It's just not something you see every day in the NFL, a cover three sim with a safety coming. So many of those get checked where the backer ends up having to go, but the Steelers commit to it and it's a great job there on the blitz. Here's another double mug pressure from the Seahawks. As I said earlier, a lot of times you're just trying to get a defensive player and a really good matchup against an offensive player that you just don't think can block the guy. The Seahawks do this here. As you can see, Brooks gets by Chuba Hubbard, but Reed gets through and they combine on the sack. Even fakes out the camera guy. I included this pressure for pure nostalgia. This is what is widely known as the NCAA pattern. It is at one time every college football team in the country ran it. It is considered the OG fire zone. The Ravens run it out of the under here. The nose is gonna cross face. The three technique is gonna go for contain. The outside linebacker to the side is gonna drop. 
The end here is gonna long stick. Roquan here is gonna fit in the B or rush to daylight. Hamilton is gonna come off the edge. I know shocker, right? The safety in the frame is gonna come down and play fire flat. Queen is going to play the three receiver hook, and this safety is going to play the middle third. Now the Ravens add a little interesting twist here. You're going to see as the play develops, the nose is going to see this sealed off. So once Clowney clears, he's going to end up twisting back around, which is not something you see very often, or I haven't seen very often. You can see the effect it has. That nose is a little faster. He may smoke that guy pretty quickly. But he ends up forcing him up. Oh, he's so upset he missed the sack. Oh, poor nose tackle. <laughs> Let's watch the full thing. One of the most simple pressures in football, and one of my favorites, is what I refer to as whip fire zone. It's how I learned it. It's called a lot of different things by a lot of different people. I liked it so much, I dedicated one of my first videos that I made for this channel, 45 minutes on one blitz. I talked about it then, I talked about it last week, I've talked about it in other videos, and I'm gonna talk about it today. In fact, I like it so much, it gets its own section. The ironic thing about this call is sometimes it's not even a fire zone. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. In fact, the way I learned it, it was a simulated pressure where it's only four guys rushing, but for some reason it's called fire zone. Well, there's an explanation. Just go watch the other video. I'm gonna put it in the top left so you can check it out. You can also run as a cover one pressure, which I showed last week and I will show in a little bit here, but it's just so simple and effective that I wanted to show you a few for this week and some of the variations. Here's one from the Titans. They're running as a five man pressure with fire zone behind it against what I would say at best is questionable protection from the Browns. Now in the other videos that I've talked about, it's usually the G's here and the backers just hitting the B or the Titans are gonna run it with a three technique and pinch it side and bring the backer behind him. Again, some bad protection from the Browns as we watch the clip. The overload by the inside backer and the edge defender forces a sack, a fumble from Watson and a 16 yard loss on a first down, putting him way behind the sticks. Here's a clip from the Dolphins. They're gonna run the five man cover one version in the red zone on a third and three. The edge defender is gonna peel on the back, which is a little different. And you usually say this might've been a red zone tag by Fangio, especially on a down like third and three where the ball is gonna presumably come out fast. This allows the linebacker who usually plays the running back man to man as a rat in the hole, which again is a little different. The Broncos send five out into the route. The Dolphins are gonna bring it away from the back on this side. And with the pinch, the linebacker going and the edge rusher going, with five in protection, they have to squeeze down. So you see the tackle sets out here, sees the blitzer coming, has to step back down. Now Ogba's free off the edge. Terrible circle there. No one is open. Wilson doesn't see it until the very last second. And it's too late and there's a 15 yard sack. And this is why the pressure is so good. You can bring one inside backer, you can rush or drop off the opposite edge and create maximum chaos with very little effort. It's why I talk about this pressure time and time again, even though it seems like the most simple vanilla pressure that you can get. I mean, just look at the chaos here. Oh, and that's a nice little adjustment. I didn't notice that at first. Let's go back. Watch a three technique here. Really sell it by going in and then getting out here. I don't know if he just busts or that's planned or a nice hold there by the left tackle, but I like that. Let's watch the coverage adjustment now. Again, the edge player is going to peel with the back. That allows this linebacker who usually covers the running back to drop over the middle. And because it's the red zone, the middle safety here, I don't know if he thinks he has the back or if he's doubling someone over here. It looks like there's a little confusion, but it ends up working out. I don't know if maybe by this set. Ooh, let me look at this. Maybe by this set, the safety thought they were gonna run the mesh wheel. But if they're gonna wheel him up the sideline, so he decided to play that. I don't know for sure. I'm not in the meetings. I'm not in the game planning sessions, but that's a pretty good shout there, I think. Okay, to round out the video, here's a clip of the Bills against the Commanders. It's third and two, so the Commanders are most likely to try a quick pass. They're gonna try to get five out. Just like the last clip, the tackle here is going to have to step down, which allows the edge player to come free. We're gonna do something we normally don't do, which is we're gonna start with the wide copy, and that's because Epineza off the edge forces the quarterback to throw under pressure. Howell has to release it, floats it a little bit, and Micah Hyde picks it off. I mean, it's just so simple. Look at this. 
Look how much bang for your buck you get. And that's the fire zone version. Let's watch the wide copy one more time. Watch Hyde come from depth here. Read this like a book. He gets in the slant window. Just beautiful. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the bell for notifications. And also, never forget, the quarterback can't see with tears in their eyes. They definitely didn't see Micah Hyde.